Hey guys, how's it going? Farthest Frontier is the kind of game that the more you play, the more stuff you figure out and the things you wish you had known when you first started playing. This game that just kind of keeps getting deeper and deeper and deeper. So with that, let me give you a few tips and tricks that I have picked up that you might find helpful when you first start playing or even if you have been playing the game Farthest Frontier. So the first trick I have you guys is how to clear fences and walls really, really quickly. When you're building fences around your farms, which you should, it does help keep out wildlife, which can eat your crops, which never feels good. Uh, but you may need to expand your crop fields, add some more in, and you want to either expand the walls to a larger size or remove your old wooden fencing and add in field stone fencing later. Well, it's actually really, really quick and easy to remove these. Instead of having to go one by one and click salvage building, we're going to press C for clear, and we're going to drag and select that. And now we have the walls selected and we just hit clear and boom, no more walls. They are gone. Instantly, no having to click one at a time. Now I can go in and either expand a field out, add in some field stone walls, however I want to handle that. Staying with the theme of hotkeys that are really useful, let's take a look at what X can do. We if we press X, that brings up the wall manager right here, or the wall select tool. We're going to select maybe all of our palisade walls right here. And now we can salvage all of these walls at once, rebuild them, or upgrade them. So this is an easy and quick way to upgrade all of your palisade walls into stone walls, rebuild missing walls if they have been uh, to torn down by raiders or invading armies, or you can salvage them similar to the clear button. This also works on field walls. So we take X again, and we select our field walls over here. If any of these had been destroyed by raiders, we can rebuild them all really quickly. Another really useful tip for this is this lets you see if you have any gaps in your in your walls. We take X again and we select all of our walls. I can see that this right here is being rebuilt. I tore it down for an experiment a moment ago. Uh, but if I had any gaps in my walls, it would show up. And so use X to find any gaps in your walls, rebuild walls or upgrade them. Now, unfortunately, uh, the field, the fencing right here cannot be upgraded into field stone. So that's something we can't do right now, but it is very useful for your palisades when you are ready to start upgrading all of those into stone. Next up are blueberry bushes. Now, this is something that a lot of people may have already heard about, but if you haven't, then check this out. Blueberry bushes, that's specifically blueberries. There are other ones such as Hawthorne and stuff, but we're, what we're looking at is the one that is actually called blueberry. The icon for it looks like the fruit right here, and it has a relocate building icon. So what we can do with it is just pick it up and drag it where we want it. I'm, I've been tossing mine over here for right now. Uh, what I'm the reason for is because I have a forger hut nearby and I am using him to forge these blueberries. And there we go. That blueberry bush has been moved. So now I have easy access to blueberries whenever I want them right in the middle of my town or wherever I decide to finally put them. Uh, you can do anything you want with them. You can make a nice little farm with them. You can maybe put some houses around them, decorate them up all nice and pretty. But doesn't matter how you do it. Just move your blueberry bushes, all of them that you can find into a nice big area and make sure you have your forager set to where he will go and harvest those. Uh, blueberries to come up in the springtime, usually by the third-ish month of the year. Some uh, third, fourth month of the year is when the blueberries come into season. So around that time, you will have a huge crop of fruit coming in. Uh, and if you are in tier three, you can preserve that fruit in jars for extended use. Temporary shelters are a bit of a misunderstood building in this game. Temporary shelters are a building that you can build in tier two. And what they do is allow your workers at distant sites to have a place to eat and go and rest during bad weather. They do not act as a home. As you can see right here, I've got an iron mine that is quite a ways away from my main town. My city is over here and my iron mine is way out here. So I have placed a temporary shelter right here close by to it. 
This gives the workers a place that they can go to uh, get something to eat so they can continue working. And if some bad weather hits or it gets too cold or something like that, they can go inside this building right here to take shelter. It is not an actual home. People will not live here. So just be aware of that. Um, your people will still go home for regular rest and to stock their homes if there's not a market already stocking it nearby. So kind of at the time of this recording, remote work camps are a bit of a pain because, again, your people are going to go back and forth to your towns a lot. But temporary shelters will at least help with some of that. So you don't have to worry about your people running home during a blizzard or something. They can just go right here and then they'll go right back to work. Roads through your city are really not necessary. I know it's kind of a habit that we want to go through and add roads uh, around all of our houses and create housing bound roadblocks and stuff like that. Uh, but it's not necessary. People will walk through the gardens, through the homes. They will walk everywhere. Your compost uh, night soil collector, he will drive his little cart all through these areas. He doesn't have to have road access. So don't go crazy with roads. As you can see, I've got quite a few roads going through here. Like this road right here, probably be taken out and have that wagon facing out onto the main road. Your wagons do need roads. You want to make sure your industries and your mines and stuff have a uh, good road access, not because they need the road, but because it makes the wagon travel a little faster. So the wagon can go and pick stuff up. Roads are really for your industries, to be honest, your houses, your public buildings, they don't need them. You could pack them pretty tightly together with a lot of decorations around them instead, and your people will walk everywhere they need to go. So don't go crazy with roads. Only have a few as necessary uh, and have them as necessary around your industries. But save the space, pack your buildings in a bit tighter, and instead of roads, maybe put down some decorations. Now here's a fun little trick. You're trying to find out where you have iron, coal, sand, all that kind of stuff. Well, it's actually really quick and easy. We go underneath the resources tab and let's check coal. Now, I can see I have coal right here, but say I don't know that's right there. If I click on coal, it highlights it in a nice circle. I can see that I've got 152 coal right there. Looking around the rest of the map, I'm not seeing any more offhand, but if I spent some more time looking, maybe I could find some more coal like that. You could do that with everything. If we click the clay pit, this highlights yellow and that little yellow bit right there, easy to see because it's in the dark right there. If it was over here, it would be a bright yellow like that. There's a nice bright yellow spot in the area that I can see around my town. And that lets you see where you can put resources really, really easy. Uh, you could do the same thing with sand. Unfortunately, I can already tell you this map has no sand for me, so I can't find it. But if I did again, it would be highlighted yellow. Sand pits and clay pits highlight yellow. Mines highlight different colors. Coal is a dark gray. Iron is kind of a white color. And then gold is obviously yellow, a uh, yellow circle. So that is just a quick and easy way to find out where resources are at on your map. Now, obviously, you can't get into this until tier two, but it does help you find where those resources are. When you're first starting out, gold is about at a premium. You don't have much and you need to make a little bit because you're probably going to need lookout towers if you're playing on difficulties that include raiders. So what you can do actually is build your early food production buildings within the range of the market. That's right. Hunters, foragers and fishing shacks all contribute to the gold income from a market. They count under the taxes. So if we see right here, I am making six at the moment and I have 10 coming in from the market. I do have one forager shack within the range of it. Now let's see what will happen if I put a hunter within the radius of that market. All right, the hunter has been moved. As you can see, our taxes have gone up to 11. It's not much. No, it's only one gold per building. But you normally will have two foragers, you know, two hunters, maybe two fishers early on. That's going to get you enough food for quite a while. So that is six gold right there. That's enough to cover the cost of a lookout tower or a, a um, compost yard. So good idea. 
Put those around the market early on. Later on, especially once you get to homesteads and you are expanding your city, you'll move those buildings, get them out of there, get them out of the range of the market. You want better stuff within the range of it. But maybe you have another smaller section of town that is a just a small market with maybe just some shelters or something around it that you want your food production around. It's just a fun little thing to make a little extra money early on in the game or maybe even mid game when money still might be a little tight. Don't forget that when you reach tier three, upgrade your decorations. They don't cost much, and by this point, you're going to have plenty of these resources, bricks, gold, and wood planks for a lot of this different stuff, and go ahead and upgrade your decorations. You'll get a little more in desire, a little more desirability out of them, which just goes to help your houses start upgrading later on into manors at tier four, or if they are still at homestead and you want them to move up to the larger houses, then you can also uh, get that desirability from that. So don't forget to upgrade your decorations if they are being uh, or if they have the ability to upgrade. Another thing to not forget is the wells. You can upgrade wells as well. And, see what I did there? And they also give a small desirability bonus. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Now, if you are playing on difficulties that include raiders, especially on the vanquisher level, uh, you'll need to be dealing with defenses. Raiders really love targeting your storage places, especially your town center, your, your root cellars, your storehouses, your vaults, they, and your markets. They love targeting those things. So as you are walling in your settlement, there's two things you can consider doing. The first is this setup right here. Have your town center, because your town center can be garrisoned, and so the villager, villagers will shoot from it. So build your town center, and some of your early storage, uh, I've got a storehouse, two root cellars, my vault, my trading post, and a barracks inside this little palisade right here. What happens is when raiders come and they come to this gate, they're getting shot at by the barracks and the town center right here because they are going to focus on that gate. Now, most of the time, my raiders are coming right here. So I have built what is called an airlock system. I've got a little airlock right here. It's a, a, a gate and then a double gate, and I've got two towers right here behind it. This allows my uh, this allows my towers and my soldiers from the barracks time to come and deal with the raiders while they are attacking these gates. Now, obviously, palisades are pretty weak, so eventually you're going to want to upgrade all of this to uh, stone, uh, but and just that just increases the defensibility of it. If you're playing on a difficulty that includes the soldiers and the big armies and stuff, you may want to think about doing a double layer of walls with towers lining it or something like that. Uh, but just, you know, for Trailblazer difficulty, where you're not having to deal with the massive 200 man armies, then maybe something like this with a simple airlock system will help you defend your settlement. When you are ready to upgrade from dirt roads into cobblestone, don't do the upgrade uh, option right here. It's kind of broken right now in 0.7.4 at least, and it can take them a long time to upgrade that cobblestone road. It's it's obscenely long. For some reason, they just they don't do it. It's actually quicker to just go in there and delete the stupid thing. We'll delete it, hit B for buildings, obviously, and then go under here and just build a new cobblestone road. It's a lot faster, and your people will prioritize it a lot more heavily instead of for some reason, the upgrade is not prioritized, so it takes them a very long time to come and upgrade the roads, but building a new road is prioritized highly, so they will come and get this built quickly. And that is it for me, guys. That is just a quick little overview of some tips and tricks that might help you when you're starting out in Farthest Frontier, or if you've been playing Farthest Frontier, but maybe caught on a few things you didn't know. Hope this video helped you. If it did, be sure to leave a like and a comment. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, good luck with this awesome game.